do your best. It's not just about winning. It's more about doing your best than winning. Sometimes you can give everything you have on a fight or in something and it won't happen like you want. Hello, everyone, and thanks for checking us out today. You're listening to episode 24 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best stories from the best martial artists. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm also the founder of Whistlekick, makers of the best sparring gear available, as well as exciting apparel and accessories for traditional martial artists. You can learn more about our products, like our awesome sweatpants, over at whistlekick.com. And you can learn more about the podcast, including all of our past episodes, show notes for this one, and a lot more, at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter full of information, discounts, and lots of useful martial arts content. And if you're an Android user, you can check out our Android app on the Google Play Store. Just search for Whistlekick. For all you iOS users out there, don't worry, your app's on the way. And now to the episode. Today we're joined by Sensei Samuel Gagnon from Montreal, Canada. Sensei Gagnon is an accomplished martial artist as a competitor, a coach, and an instructor. He's been involved in a number of martial arts teams and has several world titles under his belt. His story is one of a man that truly loves martial arts, and he's dedicated his life to it. It's hard not to feel sentimental listening to him talk about the sport and the lifestyle that means so much to him. And with that, Sensei Gagnon, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hi, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. And how are you today? Uh, very good. Very good. It's a we're not too far away. I'm, I'm over the border a couple hours from you, but we're having a gorgeous Vermont end of summer day. Hopefully it's just as beautiful up your way in Canada. Well, right now it's raining a little bit, but we still oh, have okay. a nice, nice weather. It's better than the winter. <laughs> Canada is yes. very bad in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. We, we have some rough winters in the Northeast, don't we? And oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you. Um, longtime listeners are going to know that you're the first international guest that we've had so that's kind of fun that's exciting for me yeah that's and, exciting for me too thank you very much to having me as the first international guest it's an honor wonderful well let's jump into our first question why don't you tell me tell the listeners about how and why you got started in the martial arts well the the, the first reason was when i was a kid i just think that my parents had like a cup like pretty much every kid starting martial arts I was very young, four years old, and they had to find something to uh, give me something to do, like a sport or something to control my energy and, and everything. So they just registered me at a, a first karate lesson, which is a uh, Yote Ken. I don't know if you know that that uh, kind of martial arts. Um, and I did like for six months of, of uh, that martial arts. And I just find something that I really love. and And... I just kept going, but with another uh, branch of martial arts, uh, Kempo, uh, here in Quebec City. And I stick with that uh, that style of martial arts since 26 years now. Well, okay. Tell us how you got started with Kempo. Uh, like I said, before six months after I started with Yosei Kan, uh, my uncle was uh, were doing martial arts and Kempo. He was in a, in a studio uh, doing Kempo. So I just switched it out for, for Kempo Karate, and uh, that was uh, a way more my, uh, my, my style of, of karate, and, and I found very people that, I, that were uh, inspiration for me at that time. And uh, my sensei at that time was uh, someone that I really, let's say, fit together. Uh, he was the perfect sensei for me, uh, so I just kept going with them. Uh, from the age of five years old to now. And uh, I, I, I'm i still doing Kempo right now. Uh, I have a school of Kempo uh, on the same same federation. So it's this, under the same, uh, same people. So I'm doing Kempo with Studio Ini. That's the name of our uh, organization uh, for 26 years now. That's quite a long time to be with the same instructors in the same system. It's not something a lot of people do anymore. Why Why have you stayed? What is it about this group of people, this instructor, that well, you love? Well, right now, my, my instructor uh, quit martial arts. But we had the same master, uh, Clermont Poulain, from Studio Uni. Um, he used to be the promoter of the Quebec Open, so maybe... Lots of people know Quebec Open. 
Uh, mm-hmm. So Claremont is the the, the first uh, the first guy right now of the camp, uh, Nick Serios Campbell, uh, and and I just like I, I said the, my first teacher Denny uh, was for me like a second father, and and uh, we just fit together very well, and but one day he quit and 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 I was I just kept going uh, into my class with Claremont on another school. But it's the same organization. And the reason why I did that is um, in the past when I was young, uh, let's say at the age of 15, 16 years old, I had like kind of a uh, a moment in my life was a little bit harder for me. Like I, I did not bad things, but I was not, uh, let's say, um, an example for people. But those people just uh, stayed with me and, and keep me uh, uh feel that if I need help or if I need them, they were there all the time. And, and I got a lot of respect for them. Uh, they, they did a lot for me. So I'm, I'm never going to quit that organization and that master. It's just like a kind of, um, let's say, uh, I don't know. It sounds like they, a family. It, 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 it is a family. It is a family for sure. But, uh, I mean, it's something I, I, I don't have the word right now because, um, I try to find the, the the right word, but I mean, I'm gonna stick with those those guys and and my master and that that kind of martial arts. Yes, because I love Kempo, but first of all, I think uh, it's more about the people in in that organization than the style that we practice. Excellent. That's I think it's something that those of us that have trained for a long time uh, can relate to. We've all hopefully all have had at least some experience training with a group of people that became more than just training partners or instructors or students that you get to have that family dynamic that you're describing. So I think that's wonderful. Yeah. It's it, the, it, the way you keep people with you. And, and like you said, if it's more than just martial arts, I mean, all martial arts are the, have their good and, 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 and bad uh, side. I mean, uh, some of them are better with, with, punch and kicks and self-defense and forms and some of them are but if you find people that you love and, and you can appreciate not only what what you do but the times you pass to work with them and, and i think that's the goal absolutely now you've been training a long time and all martial artists have a lot of stories a lot of great stories but i'd like you to think about your favorite one the best martial arts story you've got and share it with us. Oh, I got so much story uh, with, with martial <laughs> arts because, like I said, I started that when I was uh, five, four years old, actually, but five years old uh, at that actual uh, federation. Um, well, probably like everybody who does martial arts, one of my uh, best story or one of my best moments in story. It's more souvenir than story, I think. Uh, for me, it's it's uh, my my black belt graduation mm-hmm. was like uh, something very special for me because I was at, I think 11 years old and uh, with all a group of of adult people and and we, we can't say exactly what we do in the, in the black belt uh, graduation but uh, that day was very special but another one uh, story for me because I do a lot of tournaments. So most of my big story are about tournaments and and uh, and traveling and and people that I've met in tournaments. Um, one where very funny is is like I said, it's another souvenir, but it's my first world championship at the age of 16 years old because we had a we had to travel from Quebec City to Venezuela first because we had a tournament the week before the world championship, and when we were heading back to uh, to Canada. To Quebec City, we just uh, like our flight were delayed. We had like 35, 36 hour flight to Quebec City, and then we had to take a bus from Quebec to Kentucky in in the USA to go to that World Championship. So we had like 35 hours trip from Venezuela to Quebec, and right in in Quebec, our bus we had I think it's 30 hours drive from Quebec City go to that. Uh, World Championship, and that was my first one at, at 16 years old. So I was really nervous and very like 
you know you want to do well. You train hard for this, and, and that, that was all my life. And, and uh, I had a, a very big competition at that, weekend, at that weekend for the world championship, and it, it, it ends to a, a fight in, in overtime with a guy from Canada uh, for the gold and silver medal. So, and, and I did that point, and I won uh, that, that, that tournament. So when I was on, on stage on the podium with that, that flag, uh, it, it, for me, it's, like I said, it's more a souvenir than, than a story with people and things like this. But it, it's probably the best moment of my life in martial arts because you work so hard since the, the age of five years old and when that a uh, couple of years after like 11 years after was very very uh, a big thing for me sure that that's certainly an incredible story and i think the part that i'm most tuned into is all of that travel i spent a number of years competing pretty heavily at, at tournaments you know some of them smaller some of them larger and i know that i didn't do my best when i had to drive you know even a a few hours you know i always did my best when i got to stay overnight and and i can't imagine how i would do with that much travel in the week before that's that's incredible and and certainly says a lot about your ability to focus and to just put yourself in the moment. So Yeah, well, I guess amazing. I guess I guess at the age of 16 I was uh more in shape than right now because I don't think I can <laughs> do it again. Uh <laughs> I don't think it's something I, I I would be able to I need I need a day before to rest and and, yeah. and be able to fight. Uh but uh, like you said it's yeah, if we think about it it looks like it, it was awesome like like a very uh, big things after all that traveling but honestly at that moment at that point i I don't remember anything else than than uh being at like you said in the moment i didn't thought about the trip or uh, even if i was tired or it was just the tournaments that was the only things in my head you have to like do your best it's not just about winning it's it's more about doing your best than than winning because sometimes you can give everything you have uh on a fight or in something and it, it won't uh, happen like you want. I mean, sometimes you can lose, sometimes you can win. Uh, but at that time, I, I had the, I had the win. might be different, but. Sure. Absolutely. So let's move on. Normally this next question is about how the martial arts has made you a better person, but you've done martial arts Let's say your whole life. You started when you were four. I started when I was four. I know. I know what that's like to to have your entire life from a, a martial arts beginning. I don't remember anything before martial arts, really. And, and I, I don't remember anything either. Feel, sure. So your life has been a martial arts life. But what would you, if you were to imagine yourself in a another dimension where you didn't have the martial arts? How would you have been different? Well, I can I can easily imagine that because I I've quit martial arts for one years and a half, maybe two years, at the age of eighteen years old. And uh, well, everything I learned before that was in my mind at that time. But I just quit martial arts because I did too much martial arts from the age of five years old to eighteen years old. That was like six days a week plus all those tournaments almost every weekend. So you know how it is. We go to school in the morning and then karate school in the night. So I just decided to quit. And and I can tell you that at that time, I thought that was a good idea to live without martial arts. But uh, I told you a little bit earlier that I had a, like a, a moment in my life uh, called that like a, I don't know how to say, say that, uh, like a, a bad moment or like something that I, I would... Uh, erase if I can right now uh, it's the moment that I quit martial arts and and when I decide to come back on the good good side or or the, the doing the good things uh, I had the, the everything I learned like control discipline uh, you know how the the, the principle and the, the 
honesty and everything we've learned with martial arts were there. And and I just decided to come back at, at, at training. I didn't have the intention of being a karate teacher or uh, going to martial arts for the rest of my life. I just had in mind that I need martial arts to uh, to set my life on the right way. And I just came back to martial arts. And, and from that time, since that moment, uh, I just start training again. I won other tournaments. I have my school. I Everything in my life is, is now straight uh, way more than when I stopped martial arts. So, so I know what it is, my life without martial arts. And for me, being there for one year and a half, uh, I'm not going to quit martial arts anymore, for sure. <laughs> mm. It's part of you. It, it is who you are. Yeah, it is who I am. And it's, it's everything you learn. I mean, everything you learn in martial arts uh, helps you in, in different areas in your life. Could be at school could be in your personal life, could be in, in at work if you don't, because I'm lucky. I live for martial arts. I have a school. I'm promoting tournaments. I have a team. Uh, so I'm very lucky that I can live from martial arts like I do. But if I, I was not able to, I'm pretty sure that everything I learn in martial arts will help me to be a better person or a better uh, worker or any, like, you know what I mean? So yeah. everything yeah, you learn helps, helps helps you to be better than than you were before. Sure, sure. I, I think it. You know, you're you're talking a lot about. <clears throat> excuse me, a lot about the side of martial arts that people that are not in martial arts don't fully grasp. You know, one of the things that I often say to people is that martial arts makes people better people. It's not just about. I mean, we know this. This is this is um, cliche for us. Martial arts isn't just kicking and punching and blocking and fitness. It's ultimately it's a way to become a better person. Yes, well, exactly. And it sounds like but, that's what you're saying. Yes, exactly. But well, I think that's the goal. And in like in every other things in life, there is a good side and a bad side. Uh, I think uh, maybe people think that or don't know don't know a, a, a lot of, about this part of martial arts because they see maybe the bad things of martial arts. They see the fighting. They see eating each other. They see uh, they see. I don't think the UFC or things like this are a bad bad circuit. That's not what I mean. But they just see the first degree of that. They see two people in a cage eating each other. Uh, mm. but it's not, it's not martial arts. I mean, it's not the first goal. I use martial arts to, to, um, teach kids and people, like you said, uh, I try to bring them to be a better person. That's, that's my goal. And I use kick and punch to do this, but I could be a, a soccer, uh, teacher and, and I would try to do the same, but my, 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 things to do it would be the soccer but right now i use karate so i use fighting and and, and forms and and self-defense to teach that but that's my goal and it's a great goal and it's one that um it sounds like with your passion i'm sure your students are learning those things and that's great and i hope you can continue as you said that you would well i will try for sure <laughs> <laughs> So now I don't know if, if with the next question you're going to talk about that time where you weren't in the martial arts, but I'd like you to tell us about a rough point, a difficult time in your life and how you were able to lean on your martial arts training to make that time better. Well, uh, when I quit martial arts and uh, I had that, that bad moment, like I said, um, is it a white way to, to say it, bad moments? Because I'm French, so sometimes my, yeah, my, no my explanations are, okay. Um, let, I didn't have the uh, everything in my life to, like I said, to put together uh, 
everything together and then have a nice life. So I didn't have money, didn't have a good work, didn't have a, a nice apartment, didn't have. A, so when you start on that way, you you just feel that nothing's go well, and 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 you don't. I mean, um, you try to find excuse why, but but the real excuse is that you didn't do the, the right thing. And and I think martial arts learned me on on the on the past that uh, everything I did. Let's say we we were talking about that first uh, first world championship I did. Uh, it's all the work I had to uh, put together and and for 11 years to come to a world uh, champion title. So I just at that moment when I had to come back, I just thought about all the effort and trainings and things I did to be a world champion, a world champion in, in point fighting. And, and I said, if I can do this to be a world champion, I can, I can put all those same effort and the same, uh, uh, hard work, uh, discipline, determination, uh, everything we learn to, to set up my life and, and try to come back on the right way. Hmm. So that I think it's all the ethic of the work and, and, and the discipline and the respect and everything you have, like I said, it's, it's all, it's, it comes around the same, same things all the time for me. Cause it's, that's what martial arts brings to me, brings all those, those, uh, tools to, to go to anything in my life could be in a relationship, could be in a, in, in a business uh, relationship, could be in, in my school and my karate school, but it, it's always, around the same things. Cause for me, that's what martial arts, it, it's all about. Like, like we said before. Okay. Sure. So I'd like you to think of someone now other than your instructor that was really important in your martial arts upbringing. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean your training, but just um, someone that was influential for you in the martial arts that you got to, that meant a lot to you. Does this, this have to be in, in the past at my beginning, or it could be like in, in, since a couple of years or at any time. Okay. Uh, right now, one of the person who is very, uh, inspiration for me and made a big difference in my martial arts life is Mike Conroy. Uh, he, he's the, he was a coach of, pretty much all the big teams in the U.S., uh, Team yeah. Elite, Team CGB. You know Mike Conroy, right? I, I know that name, absolutely. So he was, for me, he's probably the best coach from all time. A um, couple of years ago when I, I was picked up on full cir- Team Full Circle, uh, I was a Canadian. He picked me on that team, and then we would, we'd just start to do tournaments together. And his way to coach people, his way to analyze the fight is way to be close with uh, all of us and be uh, a very good coach but not just a good coach a good friend for everybody uh, on the team um, was very for me uh, i learned a lot a lot of things from him not just about my fighting styles or the way to beat people but the way he coach people he makes me a better coach because right now i can't uh, fight anymore because i got some uh, injury mm. so I, I'm, I'm a coach now. I'm running a team. Uh, I have a, a junior teams and a, and a professional teams. Um, and Mike Conroy still work with me uh, right now. But from what I, I learned from him in coaching, he made, he made me a better coach and a better person in tournaments uh, than, than I was before I met him. So he, he's one of the uh, big influence in, in my martial arts life. If we don't talk about all my instructor and and let's say Nick Serios because he's one of the uh, he was my my master before. So if we don't talk about my lineage of of martial arts, Mike Conroy is one of the most influential people in my life right now. Sure, and he's a great person to to pick to answer that question. Absolutely. So we've talked a little bit about your time with competition, but now let's let's focus on it. Tell us about what it was that you loved about competition or, or didn't love. Why did you do it? Tell us about your time for you as a competitor. Well, I used to do tournaments since I'm six years old. I love tournaments. I love the the, the 
not compare myself to, to, to other fighters or to other martial artists. I, I love to compete against my, myself. I love to uh, work to be the best, not the best of, of the other guys, like I said, just the best that I can be. Um, I love to train and I love, the, I, love, I love to have a goal. So that, that competition world gave me uh, that, that thing that I need to be motivated. I mean, it, it keeps me uh, working harder and harder and harder. And I've never been the best fighters in, in the circuit, or, but uh, just to be able to fight with all the best and, and uh, uh, giving them challenge because I know that I can beat anybody anyways but I'm not the best on the circuit was for me a big inspiration. So it kept me trainings and, and working very hard uh, every single time I was in, in the dojo or at the gym. So, and tournaments brings you a lot of, of things. It, it, it learns you how to lose, how to win, uh, lose you the respect on, on everybody, lose you out of work. It, it, it teach you out of work on, on you because, uh, you need to you need to work on lots of things when you lose or win a tournament, uh, not only on your martial arts uh, side, but uh, also on your self person, because it's not a, all about uh, kick and punch and technique when you lose a tournament. You have to to know why and what can I do and and so I really love tournaments. I think tournaments brings people uh, another aspect of of the martial arts. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I think for a lot of people that outside motivation, especially if you're someone that is towards the, the upper ranks or, or maybe you're the best fighter in your, in your gym, your dojo, or, or you're the best at doing your forms to compete, especially on a large scale like you did, gives you the opportunity to be around so many other people that are potentially better than you. And, and some of them are, are definitely going to be better than you, at least on some days. And that motivation can be really good for a lot of people. I know it was for me and it sounds like it was for you. Yeah. And, and just the, the amount of people that we met in tournaments and the, the amount of friends, uh, let's call the, this friends because it's people that we see six, seven, eight, ten times a year. Uh, and we only see those person in tournaments. But when when we see those guys and we are competing with with those but before and after it's it's kind of a, a big family in the tournaments it's weird because we we're gonna hit each other but before and after uh, everybody talks together everybody go and have a, a dinner before the tournament or after the tournaments and and just the amount of friends that i have uh met in tournaments uh gives me the uh well, I mean, it, it worked every minute that I worked for tournaments or that I had to travel uh, just because I've met all those people. Sure. And I can I can relate to that. I have, a, have friends that I've known for more than 20 years now because of tournaments. And if it wasn't for those friendships, those relationships, Whistlekick, the business that you know, has this podcast, it wouldn't exist. I wouldn't have been able to start it. Yeah. So, so I mean, every fun. second, every second we, we work and every, every things we, we do to, to go in the tournaments, cause it's a lot of times and work and money and everything, but it, it works just uh, when we look at the big pictures at the end and you say, I've, I've been there and there and I've met those people and I have so many good friends now that I can count on it. And, and so it's, I mean, I think nothing can, can be better than the martial arts world and the tournament. I, I like the, the tournaments world. I can't competing anymore, like I said, but I'm still going in pretty much every tournament. I just love it. Are you willing to talk about the this injury that you have? Yeah, uh, I got uh, I have three hernia uh, in my neck. Uh, I think it's between C. Uh, well, I think, but I know it's between C3, C4, C4, C5, and C5 and C6. Hmm. And and one of them uh, is is uh, touching the spinal cord. So every time I get hit, it's kind of a danger. Well, I I got a, a big chance that if if I get hit hard, 
uh, I could be half of paralyzed or, or just uh, paralyzed, like 100 percent paralyzed. Uh, yeah. So, so I mean, like I, I love tournaments, but it doesn't work my uh, my my life. So that's why I had to quit, and now I try to work differently. But I I'm still involved in tournaments everywhere because I love it. Good. Good. Now, if if you could train with someone that you haven't before, whether they're alive or not, who would that be and why? That I haven't trained? Yeah. Um, Bill, Bill Wallace. He was a great a great fighter, a great martial artist. Uh, I, re- I would really like to know how uh, he kicks like this because that's crazy. Um, he's one of the good good point fighter we had in tournaments. So I would say him or Pedro Xavier. Hmm. Pedro Xavier was, for me, when I was young, uh, Pedro Xavier was, uh, wow, he was the man in fighting. I've never seen yeah. something like this. And and I remember one time, uh, he probably don't even know that, he, he doesn't know me probably, uh, but I was young and we had a team fight with them. So I didn't train with, with, with him. And I was, I think I was 15 years old, not more than this. Uh, Cause I, I used to fight in the Haddle division at that age. And we had a, a team fight with Paul Mitchell. And I fought with Pedro Xavier. And he just kicked me like, I think it's four times in the face, like boom, 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 boom. I never see anything. <laughs> and, I mean, even if I try to the, 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 the understand what happened, I, I cannot understand what happened. I just didn't see anything. And that was crazy. I was happy after the fight. Just I, I fought Pedro Xavier, and I was beat a zero probably, but I was happy. <laughs> but I would like to learn from that guy too, because he was uh, phenomenal. They're two tremendous fighters, and I, I think those are, those are great choices. Uh, I haven't been lucky enough to meet Mr. Xavier, but uh, we actually did a seminar with Bill Wallace just a couple of weeks ago down here in Vermont, and I've gotten to know him a little bit, and he's been on the show. And um, He's going to be 70 years old this year, and he is still a better fighter than I will ever be. Oh, he's, he's, he's incredible. Incre- yeah, he's incredible. But like I said, there's so many people. But you said people that I didn't train with. Because I've trained with lots of uh, great fighters or great martial sure. artists in, in the past. But I didn't train with those ones. So right. those ones would be my, my, my best pickup right now. So who's let, let, let's go off script a little bit. Who's maybe the, the, the most fun you've ever had training with someone? I've trained with... Uh, um, Raymond Daniels a couple months ago we trained with uh, one of my best uh, training was uh, Jason Tankson Jason Borelli Tankson mm-hmm. uh, he, he came in Quebec City a long time ago and uh, he was supposed to be here for a seminar and uh, he just stick with us for three months in Quebec City uh, <laughs> yeah, he came down for seminars and, and he, he hand out with giving all the summer camps and everything and for me um, uh, Jason Borley Tankson is one of the uh, better martial artists we had uh, since a long time because he's uh, he's a crazy athletic guy. Uh, he can do forms, traditional forms, and of course fighting. He was uh, a great fighter. He's still a great fighter. He's still competing right now. He's not that uh, that old if if you compare to me. I think he he like six or seven years more than me. But when I was young, uh, 12, 13, 14, I was looking at him as a big star. And he came down in Quebec, and he, he, we had very big fun, and I learned a lot from him. He's a, he's a very, very talented martial artist. The, the most, for me, he's one of the most talented martial artists we had. Sure. Cool. How about movies? Do you have a, any martial arts movies, a favorite maybe? Uh, like? Bloodsport. Bloodsport. <laughs> Yeah, that was my, uh, it's a movie that I, if I didn't see that movie a hundred times, I didn't see that movie. Really? Yeah. What is I, it about that movie that you like? Uh, honestly, everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, the way, uh, 
it, it just maybe because it related to tournaments because uh, it, it's kind of a martial arts tournaments uh, with all different kind of, of, of martial arts involved on that. The way uh, the guy uh, wins the tournaments uh, with that, uh, just the honesty that he did it and, and, and the way he trained and the way uh, everything happened. I think that that's a great movie. And I just saw this movie maybe, I don't know when it, it came out, uh, but but probably in, at the same time that the first year it came out, and I just love that movie. So since there, I think I listen to this movie every year, two three times a year. <laughs> I think I, I, I mean, of course we we list all of our guests' movie picks in the show notes on on the website, which for for everyone listening, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. dot com. But I want to say because we've had Bloodsport as a pick before, I want to say it was eighty nine ninety somewhere in there. So it's, it's been out for a long time, but it's a classic. Yeah, it is. I think it's the first movie that, uh, made Van Damme a star. Yeah, I, I, I think, yes. Uh, I, I don't know cause I was young at that time. So I don't know if he, if he, had, he was a star before, but for me, it's, it's one of my best movies. I'm not a, a guy who listens to lots of movie, but, uh, this is one of my favorites for sure. Good. How about a favorite martial arts actor? Jackie Chan. Jackie, why? Why Jackie Chan? Uh, everything is funny with Jackie Chan, uh, and, <laughs> and 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 I think he works uh, pretty much everything he does. He he he, he do it himself. I mean, he he try to, to do all these uh, stunts and everything. Everything is almost real. What I don't like in martial arts movie right now, it's uh, the way they uh, everything is a, not a fake, but um, I mean, you cannot jump in the air, do five turns and a 360 kicks, and then uh, going down and it it, it it a guy. It, it looks uh, it looks uh, incredible when you look at it, but for me, it doesn't make sense. If right. you look you at Jack, yeah, if you look at Jackie Chan movie, everything kind of makes sense. So I would say Jackie Chan or um, the guy from Aikido, Steven Seagal. Yeah, exactly. Him or Steven Seagal. Because I like to see something real, hmm. and it looks real when you look at Steven Seagal or uh, Jackie Chan more than yeah. lots of those uh, karate actor. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's nice to be able to see someone that they don't have to play tricks with the camera. They don't have to speed things up. They don't have to do a lot of edits yeah, to so show that it's. Real martial arts, I can appreciate that absolutely. So th- this How is about, what. Yeah, yeah, go go for it. How about books? I don't read a lot of books, honestly. Okay. I'm not a fan of books. Uh, of course, I, I've read a couple books about Kempo, or uh, I have a couple books about martial arts, but I'm I'm. I'm learning the story when I go in the seminars or when I, I listen to people or when I, uh, I talk with people. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of book. That's okay. Not everyone is, and you're not the first person to say that. It's, I think the martial arts attract so many different types of people that different people learn in different ways. Some people learn better from seminars. Some people learn better from reading and being able to reread. And so that's, that's fine. Yeah, and I, I guess I, it's something I would like to try to 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 start uh, slowly. I mean, uh, at one point in my life, I think I would I would be able to sit down and take the time to read and learn story and and learn more about uh, martial arts. And, and there's a lot of things you can learn when you read. But um, since I'm young, I'm not like I said a big fan of that. But I I want to I want to became uh, more a reader a little bit. I want to try to, but right now it's the the life is so fast that I don't even have the time to sit down and and read for an hour. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I I can relate. So you're still training, you're still teaching, you're coaching. You've got a lot going on. Are there any goals that you have? Any martial arts goals? Well, my martial arts goal, right now, um, we have a new, uh, new 
let's call this a new master, or we work a lot with Enshi Bu Jukmik. Uh, so about my traditional martial arts life, um, I, I want to go uh, de- deeper into that Kosho Ryu and Kempo uh, self-defense and, and technique and everything. So we, it's, it's a little bit different than what we, we used to do before. Uh, so, so it's new for me. Um, so that is one of my goals to, to learn as much as I can from, uh, and she and, and bring that to, to my, my style of Kempo. Um, but if we talk about my goal in, in tournaments and in my, my sport karate life, uh, I just started new teams, uh, Three, four months ago, uh, you probably know their company Hayabusa, right? I do. So Hayabusa just started a line one year ago with uh, all the karate equipment, with uh, gear, uniforms, fighting uniforms, traditional gi, uh, belt, everything we need to to uh, to do martial arts. They didn't have this before, and and from that we we have professional teams. Um, so my goal is to bring Hayabusa team to be the number one team in tournaments. Uh, it, it, it's a goal that I, I try to work with Mike Conroy and, and me as a manager and Mike Conroy as the head coach. Um, so, so that, that's my big goal right now. This and the team uh, junior, Hayabusa junior team. Uh, I got a big Hayabusa team in Canada, uh, for junior. Uh, for me, they are the best junior in Canada. Of course, are my kids, so I'm not uh <laughs> sure but and of course, it was a uh, uh one of the team members on Hayabusa that introduced us and yep. a past guest on the show, Freddie Lepan yeah exactly and and like I said, right now, I cannot compete anymore, so my goal is is to uh use everything I've learned in tournaments and in in martial arts and in my life to bring uh my team. Team Hayabusa as the, the team, the number one team in the circuit, but also to bring all my students to be a better fighter and, and, and to try to give them what Mike Conroy and my teacher and everybody, everybody gave, gave to me in the past, uh, so they can just perform more. So right now I try to work more on my student and my teams than, than on me. Hmm. Okay. Do you see that changing at any point? You mean a changing uh, for for the kids in the team? Well, to focus on you. Uh, well, yeah, of course, it it makes me work different. It, it's a it's a different way of of uh, of life to to work uh, that way. But I just like it. Like I said, I if I was able to keep doing tournaments and fighting and stuff like this, I would continue for sure. Uh, but I want to stay involved in this. Uh, sure. so, so, so I'm going to do everything I can to, uh, help those kids and that team to, to be a better team or a better fighters or a better kids or, uh, that's my goal. Sure. Okay. And of course we're going to have links. I'll, I'll get links from you to, uh, the team and, and so people can follow Team Hayabusa on social media. Um, you know, you guys really have quite a good roster of athletes. It's pretty impressive, the folks that you've put together in sort of a short time, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a new team. It's, it's hard to yeah. put, it's hard to put everybody together and, and uh, bring fighters. And we don't, my goal is not to, to go on another team and pick another fighters uh, if they are coming to us and they, they are interested in being on our team. Uh, of course, if, if it fits with, with our goals and everything, we will think about it, but it's hard to tell people that, uh, uh we have a good team and bring all those good guys. Cause of course, if they're that good, people are looking at, at them and then we are new on the, on the circuit. So we have to work very hard to uh, have that good w- roster, like you said, but, I think we did pretty pretty much a good job right now, actually. I would agree. Um, so let's wrap it up. What, what do you have for advice for people that are listening, that are training? Maybe they're they're feeling like they're at a point where you were, where you're, they're they're thinking about 
stepping away from martial arts or they've just come back or, or whatever else they've got going on. What advice would you give to people? Well, I would have two advice. First uh, is uh, for all the parents that are listening that uh, if, if you don't do martial arts or your kid doesn't do martial arts, I guess not a lot of people who listen to this doesn't do martial arts, but <laughs> right. uh, it, just just involve your kids in martial arts and keep them involved in martial arts. Sometimes we are afraid to uh, push our kids uh, at, at the age of six, seven, eight years old because uh, we don't want to push them somewhere they don't want to go. But I think that uh, sometimes it, it gives them just the, the, the little things they need to, to keep going in martial arts and that martial arts life will help them uh, uh, forever. Uh, that, that's the, the, the first advice. If, if, if you have kids, just uh, throw them in the martial arts world and, and try to keep them uh, involved in this any way you can because uh, it, it's, it's a good, good way of living. That, that's my first advice. The other one is more for competitors or, or even, even uh, just a practitioner. Uh, sometimes we, we are tired of something or we, we just want to quit, like you said. But we never know uh, how close we are to succeed. Uh, sometimes people quit and, and if they would just try one more time, uh, they would succeed on something. Could be in tournaments, could be in, in, in a graduation, could be in something in your life. So I would say never quit. Just keep going on because you never know uh, how close you are to, to win or succeed or, or to be able to re- reach your goal. Excellent advice. Well, Sensei Gagnon, I really appreciate you being here, coming on the show, and sharing all of this with us. Well, I, I, I appreciate that you, you have me on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to episode 24 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and thank you to Sensei Gagnon. If you like the show, please subscribe so you never miss out in the future. And if you could help us by leaving a five-star review wherever you download your podcast, it really would make a difference. Those reviews help new listeners find the show, and if you hear us read yours on the air, go ahead and email us, and we're going to send you out a t-shirt, water bottle, and some other great stuff. Just email us info at whistlekick.com, and we're even going to cover the shipping on that. Now, don't forget, you can check out the show notes with photos and links to all the stuff that we talked about today over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're there, if you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone that would be a great interview, please fill out the guest form. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can keep up on everything Whistlekick. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. And while you're at it, check out the great stuff we have at whistlekick.com. Gear, shirts, pants, and a whole bunch more, all made for martial artists by martial artists. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.